everybody, it's Gabe Finocchio, and we are back with another Royal Royal Worship interview series. And I have the privilege and pleasure of, of interviewing my friend, John Guerra, this week. Hey, John, how you doing, bro? What's up, dude? <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. We March made 7th, we 10.40 have, a.m. This has happened. Yes. Well, you're, dude, you're in Chicago, right? So you're only an hour behind me. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, but, but still, just you know, getting up before noon, I get it. You're, you're <laughs> you, you are a true artist, and getting up before noon is just impossible. I, I said, oh, I understand, sort oh of. Oh gosh, oh my god, <laughs> dude. I, what time do you actually get up? Typically. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say I typically get up between like. Oh, I hate to say this, but like <laughs> typically between 10 and noon. Like that's that's been my thing for so And are long. your evenings productive? Yeah, I get super creative Crazy. at nighttime. <clears throat> Crazy. And yeah, like I'll write I'll write tons of songs at night. I'll I'll yeah. I I just like my mind gets, you know, like it's it's almost like my 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 day snowballs into creativity. <laughs> I'm like useless in the morning. I'm like a zombie. I'm oh, like, that's hilarious. Yeah, and then as the day progresses, I'm like, oh yeah, and this, and this, and that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That. And then I'm like creating like a matrix. <laughs> that's amazing. So then I, yes. I, I've solved all the world's problems before I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. And then they're all in chaos again by the morning. Exactly. Some people, I think some people are ovens and some people are microwaves in terms of energy and productivity. Some people do take like a bit to heat up and take a while to cool down. And then some people are just like, bam, just in it. Wow. Yeah. I'm cool. definitely, I'm definitely more of the, the kind of slow heat up too. But I, but my mornings are very necessary. My, my like, so we've been trying to get up around like, 6, 5.30, and really, really make the mornings last. Because after a certain time, I'm just useless in terms of productivity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get that. I get that. I don't know, dude. I think I have like a built-in espresso machine in my, <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in my body. And I just like, you know, like you and I, when I was, I, I was, we were hanging out like probably a month ago or a few weeks ago. And, and in Chicago, we went to Pequod's Pizza, the best slice of pizza in Chicago. Come on, somebody. And we were just like, I mean, we spent like three or four hours late into the night talking, right? Oh, so good. I mean, we could just so do that. But, but in that regard, like, I heat up, man. Those are the moments. like Totally. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think, totally. we, I think we actually tried to leave like two or three times. <laughs> And we were just totally. like, oh, come on. Oh, what about this? <laughs> totally. No, for sure. No, for sure. Anyway, it's always so, <clears throat> okay. So, John, you and I have been friends for a while. So we know each other. We're very familiar with each other. But honestly, I love um, I love your music. Genuinely, I, 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 you know, it's like I'll listen to music um, out of courtesy for, for some people. <laughs> and then I'll listen to music out of genuine pleasure. I listen to your music out of genuine pleasure. I will put your, your album on and, and just like, oh, it's like waves of mercy and waves oh. all over me. And I love, I love your music so much. So Thanks, dude. So, dude, tell me uh, what, is, what is going on with, with your music. Um, you know, we're, like kind of, first of all, I want to know kind of how you began. Like as an artists and people who are interested in music I find they're continually interested in like, okay, how did this person get to where they are now? So like, how about you like, exp like do a little sound bite on your, your story. Started playing guitar when I was 12. Um, I, my family moved cross country uh, the beginning of the summer and we moved from Houston, Texas to Wheaton, Illinois. And I didn't have any friends. It was the beginning of the summer. I wasn't at school. So I went to youth group a couple of times. I still was kind of having trouble connecting with people. My, moms saw, my mom saw that the youth group was going on a two-week missions trip. 
And she was like, you're going on the trip. And I was like, under no circumstances am I going on that trip. <laughs> you know, three weeks later, I was on that trip. And <laughs> on that trip, the youth, it was only maybe 15 kids. On that trip, the youth pastor every night would strap on his Taylor acoustic guitar and would lead us in worship, whether that was, you know, Vineyard, whether that was the corny, you know, songs from the 80s, whatever it was. But something about that moment, that time where I was, um, it was like the scales fell off of my eyes, the cotton wads came out of my ears, and I suddenly was like, like this, this is everything. It was music, it was art. I didn't have language for it then, but it's like I, I, felt, I felt perceived by God for the first time, and wow. it was like everything to me. It was like, wow. it was like, you know, I'm not alone. This is amazing. You know, by the end of the trip, it's like my hands are in the air and I'm just like, I want, I wanted everything about it. So I asked my youth pastor if I could take some of those sheets, like the sheet music, the charts. And I went home and my mom had an acoustic guitar in the basement and I picked it up, got a, a 999 chord book from Guitar Center and just started like teaching myself guitar worship songs. And basically from that point on, it was like, that's pretty much all I was interested in. Music, music, music. It was connected to worship. I started leading worship in high school. Um, well, first middle school, I was like guitar number four, unplugged, the kid that's like behind the drum set, just like, <laughs> you know, and did that for a couple of years and then started leading worship in high school. In, uh, started a band in high school, um, went to college, kept leading worship, started a band after college, started doing jingles in my mid-20s. That was like my first job job with music. Okay. And I'm um, in Chicago here, and um, they needed a, a worship leader for their downtown campus. And so I um, started being a worship leader for their downtown campus. And right around that time, they also were recording an album um, and it was, and, and there was a worship band out of that church called Vertical Church Band. And so I was kind of the new worship leader for the downtown campus. And they were like, hey, we're doing some writing in a couple weekends. Do you want to come? So I came on that writing retreat and on that writing retreat, wrote a couple songs, wrote a song called I Will Follow, a song called Only Jesus Can, and was a part of another song that I forget that ended up, ended up making the album that they were recording called Rock Won't Move. and. Um, Vertical Church Band, I recorded that album with them, and through that got connected to what was then my record label, Sony Provident, and um, and that was five years ago now, and w once I, once Provident heard, you know, I Will Follow, and a few other songs that I did for Vertical, they were like, do you have any other songs? And I'd been writing songs for years, you know, but they weren't proper what I consider proper worship songs. Like I never considered myself a um, like congregational songwriter. Yeah. I love I love the church so much. I love singing. Yeah. I love I love it. it it's, I mean, you hear my story. That's how God got a hold of me. Yeah. But my true north isn't necessarily congregational. My true north is what I'd call devotional songwriting. Yeah. Songs that are um, directed to God. Um, in, in kind of like a psalm, psalmist type way. Yeah. So, so less of a even, you know, songs with a Christian influence about the universe. Yeah. More like songs to God from, from me, from this very idiosyncratic place in the universe. Um, and uh, anyway, so Provident heard some of those tunes. They're like, this is amazing. Let's put out a record. And then we put out a record called Little Songs in 2015 and I've pretty much been on the road since then so wow. um and now I'm finally um end of last year I kind of slowed things down to start writing for the follow-up to Little Songs which doesn't have a title yet but I, I'm I'm in the throes of it I'm in the thick um I'm literally just I mean, you can, I can kind of spin this thing around. I'm in my studio here in Chicago. It's just like littered with keyboards and like <laughs> guitars. Love and, it. And books. And Love. It's a so, war 
zone. It's a musical war zone. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, this is foxhole. This is a 300 square foot foxhole wherein. Um, yeah, you're just you're, there's no atheists in the fox. There's no atheists in the foxhole, man. You are praying. <laughs> You are praying for God to give you inspiration. Oh right? gosh, exactly. That's exactly. good. Okay, so, so, so now we're at uh, little. You had little songs, which I love. Little songs. That's that album is just so next level. Um, <clears throat> I, there's like two or three songs on that album that ruin me um, every time I listen to it. Uh, didn't you write one of them with Matt Marr? There's yep. Yeah. Stained Glass Windows was okay. a song that I wrote with Matt Marr. Okay. And um, Matt Marr is just the best. Yeah, love his stuff, dude. Yeah, well, it, he's just such a lovely person. He's he's charitable with differences, and I think that that's saying a lot. Some people really just manhandle a co-write and try to shift it into, like... But he's very much collaborative and very much, like, honors the distinction between people. And Oh, he, yeah, totally. Totally. Dude, I've been in those manhandling situations before. Totally. I typically respond, and I'm just like, I'm I I tend to be the one who takes it for the team. And I'll just be right. like I'll just be like, yeah, man, like let's that's a great idea. Oh, right. that's brilliant. Oh, I love that. And meanwhile, I'm thinking, that's terrible. That's the worst thing I've ever heard of. Totally. Totally. <laughs> wait, it's like, wait, wait, you alone are holy? Yeah, that's fresh. Let's go with that. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> Amazing. It, okay. <laughs> okay. So you're, so you've got, you're working on your follow up. I'm so pumped. I actually, I don't think you let me hear any of these songs, but I, no, I can't I haven't wait. Yet, no. Yeah. I, I can't wait. Do you have a, are, are you coming out with something like, like in the next month or, or what, what's the timeline for that? Are you still working that out? No. Yeah. So um, the goal is, probably like January, 2020 Okay. realistically, because what I, I'm in chats with, a, you know, a few different labels and trying to get the partner situation nailed down. And then in the fall, I'm imagining also that right next year. So that I, um, that's kind of the upscale. And um, with mixing and mastering and everything, and you know, just even wrapping up tracking, I think that's probably a realistic goal. Yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> we 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 kind of we kind of lost you just for a few seconds there, but but you were saying you were talking about um you were talking about a 2020 release in yeah. January, and and you know. Um, you're, 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 you're kind of still, you're still looking for, uh, support for like maybe label support and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Just, just kind of nail, nailing down partners, booking, yeah. label yeah. management and, and that, that stuff you don't want to rush because that's like, you know, that's like, you know, dating somebody for three weeks and then getting married. It's like that, that just creates all sorts of problems. So you yes. want to, you want to <laughs> take it slow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally, dude. I completely, I, I completely agree. Well, um, I'll be praying for you for for that whole situation because, Thanks, dude. dude, people need to hear your music, man. People need to get it. It's just, uh, it's such, uh, you you are such a gift, bro. Okay, Thanks, so, <clears throat> so let's let's talk. But uh, I will say, oh, this yeah. is the other reason why it's taken a bit, and this is this is something fun. I was a part of scoring a film the last couple of years that is coming out this year. Oh, is that right? So, yeah. So, oh, the film will come out. It's called a hidden, a hidden life. Okay. And it's called, and it's from a director named Terrence Malick. Dude, Terrence so, Malick? Are you kidding me? No. The Thin Red Line, Terrence Malick. Yeah. Whoa, dude. So that's that. You know, that's kind of why. I mean, it's been a few years since Little Song, but that's kind of, you know, that's kind of what's what's been occupying the artistic uh, energy the last couple of years. Wow, dude, that's amazing. That's awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I, dude, I can't wait. I can't wait for that. And you're, that's coming out this year? Yes. Awesome. Wow, so you scored that. I was a part of, I was a part of the scoring team. So there was um, uh, 
this guy James Newton Howard was the kind of like main main guy, and then Valerie and I were sort of a part of doing um, what's called reductions. So we would take classical pieces and make them smaller. So and some sound designy stuff, but um, that's but yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's so sick, so, dude. I love it. For that. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, <clears throat> okay, so so moving more into a, a practical type of like advice, you've been leading worship for like you know six years or seven or I don't know, maybe like obviously probably longer. Um, yeah. Like what? Basically, how would you? Uh, what what are the top three things that you would say to a worship leader uh, who's at a church, who's trying to make it, who's try, who's who finds himself maybe in the same position that you're in as an artist, uh, but serving a local church? What would you what would you, what are the top three things that maybe you've learned along the way to kind of help mm. gauge uh, somebody who's you know kind of in leadership as worship uh, uh, director or something? Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to assume that the people, I guess, listening, there's obviously the practical piece of just um, not not letting the craft be an obstacle for your service to the church. So guitar playing, the voice, the leading the band, that stuff feels like bare minimum for it because it's like, it would be like somebody saying, you know, I'm a carpenter, but I don't know how to cut wood straight, or I don't know how to use a hammer. It's like, I'm assuming that people have a general grasp of the craft. Right. Um, with that said, I will say that, that the things, um, I, I think that, think of it this way, I, I, I see there, there being like two buckets there's there's a bucket that you're drawing from, and then a, draw, a bucket that you're putting in. Um, this this bucket that you're putting into, um, I, I see that as spiritual disciplines. I see that as physical disciplines. I see that as um, spending time in silence, in study, in prayer, right? Um, listening to God. Yeah. Getting to know. Um, getting to know, I guess, how, how the spirit of God stirs in you uh, on a daily basis. I mean, these are things that kind of go in there. Yeah. Having scriptures in mind that you feel you want to bring to a service. That's one bucket. And then when it comes to the service bucket, it's like you're, you're drawing from this well every week of like who you are as a person. Um, and you're drawing from that well. Um, both in planning and in spontaneity. So, but at some point you're going to pull something out of this bucket that you put into this, this bucket. So maybe some, you know, God will bring something to mind that, yeah. that is in this other bucket. Yeah. And, I, and I don't think it should just be, I think we get into the trouble and we're like, okay, I'm only going to study. I'm only going to read the scriptures that I know I'm going to share on Sunday. I'm only going to sing the songs that I'm, I know I'm going to sing on Sunday. Cause then you're just kind of like, it just gets stale. It's not this like, you know, infinity loop of, of input, output, input, output. Um, I, I heard, I was listening to this psychologist talk recently about, about just healthy habits of a, of a life. And, um, she's an orthodox psychologist and she said that the infinity loop of health is action and reflection. So, and I think that's very healthy because if you ever, if you get too much stuck in the reflection, which I think you can re reflection can also be habits and disciplines. Yeah. It just kind of, it, it's like, you gotta, you gotta, it becomes kind of like a, a closed, um, like you, you can grow mold, you know, there's no ventilation. Right. And if you're only action, then you get burned out super quick because right. there's no input. So there has to be this kind of like, and, and for me, the disciplines, um, if I had to pick only three things, I would say, um, Silence. I would say um, study and I care. 
silence, study, prayer. Okay, silence, study, and prayer. Awesome. And those are the three. Those are the three things that you would you would go to frequently in order to fill that first bucket. Yes. Right. I. And and, and I and I do realize that that's very internal. That's the internal life. And but but there, I feel like there's a million people who who's who are going to give you like hot tips on how to make a a great four song set banging. You know. Yes. Like, <laughs> you can find any. It, it, and, and granted, I, that's not even my strong suit. I, again, I, I feel like I try to make sets for the 300 people at Cathedral on Sunday. Mm. And I try to make sets that reflect who I am as, a, as, a, as somebody who's trying to... This is another thing. I, even, even using the phrase worship leader, what you're really doing, you're leading them in worship, but I think, but I think you're, you're also pastoring people. Mm. So though you might not see yourself as a vocational pastor, right. I, I'm not a vocation. I'm not in vocational ministry per se. Right. I minister to people. 